just going to clean up a scrap chunk of aluminum. I cut it down to rough size with the bandsaw. I'll clean it all up. Uh, I need to drill some holes. This is for the uh, lathe project. The 9x20 CNC. I want to clean that up just a little bit, so I'm going to leave it sitting out there. And I'm not going to worry about tapping it down. I'm not too, you know, I'm not worried about uh, it being absolutely perfect, perfectly parallel. Uh, I'm not leaving the uh, parallels in there because I don't want them to wander out into my cutting path here. So I'll just take them out. It's clamped tight enough. I did a little measuring on the uh, the chip guard, splash shield, whatever it is on the back side. And I need to come in roughly three quarters of an inch to drill the holes that are going to be pass-through holes for uh, the bolts to go into the headstock, okay, to hold this plate to it. Then I'm going to need to drill and tap two more holes over here so that I can screw the splash guard to this, okay? And I'm going to separate those by an inch. I'm going to come in, a, I need to go inch and three-eighths down, three-quarters of an inch in, and then they're 100 millimeters apart. <clears throat> That's the nice thing with the DRO is when I drill this hole, I can just switch to millimeters and just go 100 millimeters down. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to use the drill bit because it's just not that critical. quarter inch is plenty of pass-through for a... Uh, M6. I want to be 1.25 in this way and another 1.25. So that's the very corner. So now I'm going to zero that again. 
I could have punched it in, you know, negative plus whatever. Now I need to go 0.75 in. Okay. And then an inch and three eighths, so 1.375. Now, since I have to travel way down here to do the other two, I'm going to mark my one inch over. Now, that's a for a tap, so it's going to be a 1364 or whatever. I'm not going to have a collet to put it in, so I'm just going to use this like a center drill. Make a mark, and then I can uh, do the tapping. So, let's uh, go back to zero. And from here, now I can switch it to millimeters. Ooh. 0.9 over. Came close to hitting it. Okay, this will be a pass-through. Now I need to uh, switch back to inches so that I can move this one inch and mark the other hole. Oh, wait, three quarters of an inch. <laughs> well, I may be trying to do something completely taboo here, but I've got these uh, carbide cutters on here, and they, you know, they're lathe tools, actually. So they have a relief cut in them for the lathe, but uh, what I was thinking here is I need to do a arc in here. Three inches is just fine. So rather than set up the rotary table, uh, I could possibly use the fly cutter. I could use a boring, uh, the adjustable boring head, but I'd have to nip at it, adjust it, nip at it, you know, or set it and just keep nipping at it. I'm thinking that uh, the, the challenge is, is that there's not enough relief back there to clear if I try to go that way. And if I go straight down, it's going to be the same thing. I'm going to hit the trailing edge here. So, taboo or not, I'm going to clearance the backside here because these aren't technically the tools that go in here anyway. Uh, and, you know, hey, we'll see what happens. I've got it uh, chucked back up in the mill, okay, and so what I'm doing is I'm going to bring that up there till the, the tool bit just touches, okay, and I'm just scraping. Now what I want to see is I want to make sure that the, the backside doesn't uh, touch. Oh, see that, that one, that one touched, left a little drag mark there. Now, I don't have to go that deep, so that might be an option too. Those two cutting points... I'm going to set them roughly in line, parallel with the uh, the edge of the plate there, okay? And then I can come over to this one and put it roughly in the center of that hole. Because what I'm trying to do here is uh, try to cut an arc in between these two. So we'll just eyeball that one. That one's close enough, 1.8. So let's do uh, half Y and go back to the middle. All right, there's that. Now, I'm going to turn it so it's straight on here. Let's uh, just touch there. And now we can go in. Uh, hmm, half an inch to three quarters of an inch. Probably about three quarters of an inch. This is just to clear the, uh, the chuck and the headstock rotating part. So... Um, As uh, John at NYCCNC says, uh, sanity check.
Well, I'm not so sure this is uh, the same thing to do, so <laughs> uh, let's try. That doesn't look too bad. I got a feeling I forgot to record the other part. That's going to kind of suck, but uh, that, uh, that did the trick pretty nicely. I just got to clean up the edges and go see if I took enough off. Well, this is what I was trying to cut the clearance for. And, you know, it's the... Uh, I made an assumption there that that was between the two holes. Duh, didn't even bother to take a second look. Uh, you know, even a rough measurement of, you know... <laughs> Between that roughly four inches there, that could have been, uh, you know, an inch and a half down and two and a half left. Well, as you can see there, that if I line up those bolt holes, I'm nowhere close. So I get to go cut some more out. Um, <laughs> oh well, so much for trying to, you know, make it nice and get fancy and that stuff, kind of stuff. I, no big deal. I mean, you know, once it's in there and everything like that, it's, it's, it's... It's got to serve a purpose. I'm really not too concerned with its uh, looks. You know, I need functionality. Looks would have been nice, though. Well, that's a little better, huh? Let's put a couple screws in it. Oh, yeah, quite a bit of room there. See that? There's uh, close to a quarter inch, easily three sixteenths. So that shouldn't be a problem. If I move that out three quarters of an inch, so I'll have to add some space to uh, this end as well. But you know, longer bolt. But I'm not too worried about it. Yeah. That would have been a smart thing to do. Use this as a template for uh, how I needed to clearance that. You know, that would have showed me exactly how far I needed to be from the holes. Oh, okay. Sighting down this. Yeah, see that pulled out. I need, I need another, uh, hmm, three-eighths of an inch, half-inch there. Part of the reason I went further out is, well, let's move the camera. Yeah, part of the reason why I went, whoops, pull this back, uh, I probably should have gone an inch, um, but I definitely wanted some more clearance down in here. So let's, uh, I may still have to cut a little of that off. Now let's run it in and see where we, uh, see what it does. Uh, yeah, I'm going to hit the, uh, the wire tie there, the, uh, underneath here. See, so I should have, I should have just brought that back an extra, you know, set of an inch. I should have brought it back an inch and a quarter. 
because I'll either have to notch this out or drill two more holes. So I think I'm just going to go drill two more holes. I uh, needed to move the hole up so I could move it back. Um, and I went ahead and drilled and tapped and put it in the wrong spot. So what I need to do is I'm going to come in here and you know the tolerances are pretty loose. I'm really not too worried about it. Okay, that gives me a line on the middle there. This is this is down and dirty. I don't want to. I really don't feel like uh, going back to the uh, what do you call it, uh, the mill, and redoing this. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it back another half an inch. Okay, so I'm coming off middle. There we go. And none of these tolerances are really, you know, anything critical. It's just holding the splash shield up. So, close enough. Drill a couple holes. It's the speed of going slow, you know, if you take your time, I could have built this right instead of, you know, this way. Alright, we should have enough clearance in here now. Moving it back an extra half an inch. Yep, that's nice clearance. Now, I'm hitting here. I can shorten this thing up a little bit. But, you know, much shorter, that might make a good physical stop. Because if I do shorten it up too much, I can run the wires against the motor. And that might... Plus two, it'll bind on the glass scale reader, the, the whole contraption here that's got that mounted. Uh... If I were to take that screw off or shorten it or whatever, this could run in and then it's it's kinking everything with the glass scale and the reader part there, uh, which is bad. So to have it stop on this piece right here, that just might be the, the better option. I can shorten it and get a little bit of space if, uh, if I need it, but I got about three eighths of an inch down there. That ought to work. I think I'm definitely far enough in up here. Unless I were using like a backing plate or something like that. Yeah, what I finally decided to do was uh, I just took a leftover scrap of aluminum. It was already turned. I just had to cut it to length the inch and a quarter. Ooh. I may have to mill one side down. Haha, <laughs> yeah. Alright, see that? Way too wide. Okay, so I can either turn the diameter down, which I might do, and then that way it won't hang over the end here. Oh. No, I'm just going to mill it because uh, I can't chuck it up this small in the, the short and the lathe easily. So let's just go take a side off. It's just down and dirty. Uh, I'm just going to knock it down a bit. Go get close. All right, let's try that again. Uh, it's still pushing it off just a hair, so I'm gonna go slice a little more off. And again, okay, now. I shaved more down here, and that's the narrow side, but I did shave some off the other side just so it wouldn't hang out. So let's see. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Now the question is, is bolt depth. That doesn't grab quite as much as I want it to, but this goes in way too far. Because I've got this one set up that uh, it's going to go in about that far, so... Yeah, 
Yeah, not quite halfway. Okay, that should be tight enough. Well, I used the shorter of the two bolts, the one that went in, you know, three-eighths of an inch or so. Uh, that seemed to have tightened down really nice. Um, and it actually seems pretty sturdy. A lot more sturdy than I expected, so I'm not going to bother with the back brace here unless I see this doing a lot of vibrating or whatever. I'll, uh, I'll mess with that later. I can't fix absolutely everything or make everything perfect on this. I need to get it running so I can uh, use it. That's the whole point. Well, I got the control box mounted. Not uh, not really conventional. I'm not exactly sure what conventional would be. This box was built by one of the previous owners. And I didn't, I didn't do much. I'm showing what I did after the fact instead of all the, the things I did as I was going because the reality is is nobody else is going to have a box just like this so you can see how I decided to mount it and you know if those ideas work great if not you know it might give you some ideas for some other way to mount it but uh, the box was pretty solid itself okay so I ended up putting longer a longer bolt in here and a pass-through hole in the side of the box uh, and then put a nut on the other side so then I, these were the two existing holes from this box being mounted there previously. So once I had this in place, I basically I made a spacer out of leftover metal from this, so that way it's the same width. And I just drilled and tapped two holes there. So these tighten against that spacer. That leaves a stud sticking out, just like this one does. This is, this is uh, threaded as well. So then I have three studs sticking out on the other side. Okay, uh, and then I did it with, uh, I don't, let's see if it, uh, whoops. All right, there you can see the, I put nylax on it. There's one, two, and three. And they may not quite be long enough to engage the nylock. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Uh, the other thing I did then was uh, make that, that block right there, scrap piece of aluminum, just whittled it down, put a slot in it. That's an existing hole in the cast iron, uh, from what I'm not exactly sure. Because And all that does is that just supports that back corner. Or actually, I guess it's the front corner. Whoop. That's why I put the camera on the tripod all the time. So, yeah, there's a little, there's a little flex back here in the corner. Heart, not much. You can you can lift it up. You can flex it up. You know, easy enough. But uh, you know, in the heat of the moment, now let's see if I can come back here. You know, you can push all the buttons. You know, without really getting any movement whatsoever on this box, and I can I can take the box off without having to undo the bolts for the uh, the shield. So what have I got left? Whoops. There's my tensioner. That needs to get some work done. I need to do... I want to change the drive pulleys. Um, I'm not exactly sure how soon that's going to happen, but this uh, timing belt pulley down in here, just like uh, runs on the uh, stepper motors and stuff, I want one of those driving this and driving the spindle. Uh, I saw somebody else did that. I'll have to look it up again. Um, and, and I really liked how they did it, so... I'm... I'm not sure I want quite the same step down as from that little one to... one of these. You know, I mean, that's, that's just begging to go on there. So it would give me extra torque... I'm not sure if I really need it. I'm thinking maybe I might need the speed more instead. But if I could get another pulley here, well, heck, you know, I could almost 
put an adapter in the middle of the other one. I've got two of these gears. Uh, and I could do it one for one. So I kind of have to play with that idea. But uh, that's it for now. That's it for today. Uh, next up will be to mount that box. That's the uh, controller for the motor from the uh, treadmill. Oh, the other thing I need to do too, I've, I've got this flashing sitting here. I'm going to take that flashing and and make some kind of additional shield under here so that chips can't get into the motor, okay? Uh, you know, chips or coolant actually. So I got to figure out something there, but I wanted to, I, I kind of wanted to get the box up where it was at so I could see what I had to do with the wiring and stuff. So it's getting there, slowly but surely. More slowly than surely. <laughs>